powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on KPAX, Montana's news leader. Good evening, I'm Dennis Bragg. And I'm Jill Valley. Authorities are now saying the hacker behind a cyber terror attack against schools in the Flathead is demanding a ransom be paid. It's the latest information this afternoon from Flathead County Sheriff Chuck Curry, who decided to release the ransom letter this afternoon in order to help parents understand the scope of the threat and the progress of the ongoing investigation, which began when the suspect hacked into the Columbia Falls School District computers last week. Now, the sheriff told us he hopes by releasing the letter, which he normally wouldn't do, it will show the people the threats were not real and were simply a tactic by the cyber extortionists to facilitate their demands for money, close quote. The sheriff also says the group is already known for making other threats across the country and aren't located here in the U.S. MTN's Jack Ginsburg went to Columbia Falls High School today, the school where this all started last week. Today, teachers and school officials met with law enforcement for two hours prior to a public meeting to discuss how the threats were started, when they started, and what the schools have done to bring safety back to the community. Students will go back to school tomorrow, but many parents had questions about whether the schools were physically safe to come back to. Has the school been thoroughly checked over from top to bottom, upper curtains, every place else? Yeah. That's all I'm concerned about. I could care less if they hack into my computer. Columbia Falls Superintendent Steve Bradshaw says every school has been checked, but knows that schools are vulnerable every single day. So, can I assure you 100% your kids are going to come to school tomorrow and be safe? I can't do that. However, according to the Columbia Falls Police Chief, Clint Peters, law enforcement believes the attacks are strictly cyber and do not pose a physical threat. The threat of them coming in and hurting our children is off the table, and that's the, that's the point of this meeting, is that it's not there. Peters often refers to the attacks being done as a group and says they do not think they are living in the nearby area. The extent of their knowledge of, of the internet uh, would put them in, in an extremely small percentage within the state and probably even in this country. Columbia Falls students and many others across the Flathead Valley will return to classes at normal hours tomorrow with police on campus. In Columbia Falls, Jack Ginsburg, MTN News. We, of course, are still going through this letter that was released by Sheriff Curry this afternoon where these uh, cyber terrorists are apparently asking for $150,000 worth of bitcoins. There's also a lot more information in this letter, and we'll be talking more about that tonight at 10. Whitefish City Manager Adam Hammett says there is going to be a community-wide meeting tonight at 7 o'clock at the Whitefish School District Performing Arts Center. is to share more information about what they've learned today and answer questions related to the recent cyber terrorism threats against schools. When Dillon Area School was evacuated and others put on lockdown today because guns were found in a pair of students' backpacks. Beaverhead County High School in Dillon was evacuated. The elementary and middle schools were locked down at around 11 o'clock this morning. Dillon's Chief of Police Don Guberson says a student reported that two other students had guns on them. Deeming the incident as a credible threat, school officials evacuated the high school. The sheriff said a pair of revolvers were found in students' backpacks after a search. Now, no one was hurt, but the two juveniles were detained and they could face charges. Officials say all sports practices, games, after-school programs, and other activities have been canceled for today. In other Western Montana news this afternoon, one man dead after a weekend shooting in the Mission Valley prompting a murder investigation. Lake County Sheriff Don Bell says shortly before 4.30 a.m. Saturday, they got reports that a man had been shot at a residence south of Pablo on Old Highway 93. Deputies responded determined that 34-year-old Johnny McKeever had been shot and killed by 28-year-old Ryan Black outside of Black's house. Both men are from Pablo. Black is now being held in the Lake County Jail on charge of deliberate homicide. Deputies continue to investigate the case, and McKeever's body has been taken to the Montana State Crime Lab in Missoula for an autopsy. Turning out a weather, some cooler and very wet conditions out there today. Russ Thomas joins us now with more on the rain and the snow we're seeing. Russ? That's right. It took a little time to get going in most areas, but the rain definitely moving through, and we continue to see it across western Montana. It came down heavy for a short period. Generally, though, coming down light right now, and as you see, for Security Bank, I can this in the Bitterroot Valley. We are gray. We are cloudy. We are cool out there for sure, and it looks like another couple days of that, maybe even three. 46 Hamilton currently, 47 in Missoula, 40s as well in Polson and Kalispell, uh, 52 Phillipsburg and 55 in Troy. They're your warm spots right there. Again, we are getting snow in the higher elevations, and it looks like this wet weather will continue for a little while. We'll have a complete forecast coming up. 
In other news, uh, this afternoon, University of Montana starts a five-day celebration to recognize American Indian heritage, a gathering that comes as tribes are still getting to know the ins and outs of the Trump administration. MTN's Kent Lutzen takes a look. I'm also deeply humbled because of the great responsibility the position holds to be the steward of our majestic lands, the champion of our great Indian nations, and the manager and voice of our diverse wildlife. Whitefish native Ryan Zinke became the first Montanan to hold a presidential cabinet position in March when he was sworn in as President Donald Trump's secretary of the Department of Interior. More than 200 days into the job, the relationship between some Native Americans and the new administration is not quite yet defined. Really kind of the overall trust responsibility and how the administration will engage with tribes still is really yet to be determined because we haven't seen much from the administration yet. Mill says the major concerns are the federal trust responsibilities, engagement with tribes across the country, social justice concerns, and natural resource issues. Mills added the transfer of management of the National Bison Range to Bureau of Indian Affairs and the protection of Badger II medicine for the Blackfeet tribe are just two important issues for local tribes. Up front, I am an unapologetic admirer of Teddy Roosevelt and believe he had it right when he placed under federal protection millions of our acres of federal lands and set aside much of it as our national force. In a draft report from Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke, he recommends changes to nearly a dozen national monuments, including decreasing the Bears Ears Monument in Utah. However, Zinke also suggests adding three new national monuments, one being Badger II Medicine in East Glacier. These decisions are leaving some Native Americans concerned on where his stance lies. I think Zinke's been flip-flop. And so I really don't feel like he's trying to protect as he's opening up more and more public lands or changing or basically taking away from uh, monuments that were protected. Mills said the Obama administration made significant efforts to engage tribes, including the annual tribal leader conferences, adding it's a waiting game to see how the new administration plans to engage with the Indian nations. In Missoula, Kent Lutzen, MTN News. Tomorrow, the University of Montana will be hosting a traditional regalia show at the Native American Center on campus. Widespread rain has lowered the fire danger to moderate and is providing much needed relief for firefighters across the western part of the state. Because of the conditions, fire managers will rescind the stage one and stage two fire restrictions starting Wednesday morning in the Flathead across the reservation and also in the Missoula area. With those restrictions lifted, camp fires will be allowed and folks can run uh, internal combustion engines, things like chainsaws and things without restrictions. But officials are still asking people to use caution and never leave a campfire unattended until it's cold to the touch. Open and burning, of course, does, it does remain closed until October. Our Montana Wildlife Relief Fund now stands at nearly $88,000 in county. Thanks so much to everybody for your contribution so far. And remember, we'll be matching the first $50,000 of that total. Arthur Blank, owner of the Mountain Sky Guest Ranch near Livingston, and the Arthur M. Blank Family Foundation is going to match, also match $50,000 in donation. If you haven't donated, you can go to our website and take care of that at kpax.com slash wildfirefund. President Trump visits the United Nations on the eve of his first speech before the U.N. General Assembly. He's also discussing nuclear threats from Iran and North Korea. CBS's Meg Oliver has the latest from New York. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. President Trump refused to say whether he'll pull the U.S. out of the Iran nuclear deal during a photo op with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. You'll see very soon. Earlier, he pressed world leaders to support sweeping changes to the United Nations. In recent years, the United Nations has not reached its full potential because of bureaucracy and mismanagement. The president also said it's unfair for any one nation to carry a disproportionate share of the load. The U.S. is the U.N.'s largest contributor, paying at least 25 percent of the operating budget and 28 percent for peacekeeping forces. We also ask that every peacekeeping mission have clearly defined goals. So far, about 120 of the U.N.'s 193 nations are on board. This is an opportunity for all of us to seize this moment and ensure that the United Nations remains relevant. President Trump delivers his first speech to the General Assembly tomorrow. He's expected to promote his America First agenda and discuss global terrorism, Iran, and the North Korean nuclear crisis. Overnight, the U.S. and South Korea dropped live bombs over the Korean Peninsula, while China and Russia kicked off naval drills near the North Korean border. The White House says Mr. Trump and China's president committed to maximizing pressure on North Korea during a morning phone call. 
Meg Oliver, CBS News, the United Nations. Coming up in just a few minutes, Russ will be back with a full forecast. Get ready for wet and cool conditions on tap all week long. And we'll learn more about the first road to bring travelers into and out of the Helena Valley, originally known by another name. We'll have much more here on KBS.